Hello, let's talk about tongue ties. This is a really interesting topic. And now I am treating a lot of babies who have just had their tongue ties cut. This is great. So this is gonna be some information for you that you may not have heard before that's really important. So right now, let's just start with you. So just say the word, don't, don't cheat, say it. Say the word Boston, say it out loud. And when after you say that word, notice where your tongue is in your mouth, okay? After you say the word Boston, Boston, your tongue is resting beautifully on the roof of your mouth. This is how we should be when we're not talking. This is how we want our tongue to be when we're sleeping, when we're walking, when it's a real uh, important spot for it to be. It's designed to rest on the roof of our mouth as we go about our day. Okay? It's a really important thing for our posture and the health of our airway. So an untreated treated tongue tie, when the research shows when those people, if they didn't get that snip and their tongue doesn't rest on the roof of their mouth, then they are more likely to develop sleep apnea quite early in their 40s. Okay? Really great information. So Boston, we want the tongue on the roof of the mouth. That's the important part for these babies. Now, you can check this, a really great time to check if your baby's tongue is resting on the roof of its mouth, is when they're in a deeper sleep at night. I know that's kind of funny because maybe some of your babies don't sleep well at night. But when they're in that deeper sleep, just pull their chin down and you'll be able to see. Maybe during a really great long nap, you can check too. Okay, and check multiple times. If you're finding it's not on the roof of the mouth, check it a few different times, and then you'll know if your baby's able to do that. That is the magic of the tongue tie. We wanna be able to cut it so that the tongue rests on the roof of the mouth. Another kind of symptom that we ask patients about when they, they're presenting with a, either a cut tongue tie or a, tongue, a possible tongue tie is, is your baby a noisy sleeper? We don't want noisy snoring babies. It's not what we want because it is indicating, it could be indicating what's going on in their nasal, in their, in their airway. Okay. Important part of our body, right? So that, um, and what is the other thing? So mouth breathing. So again, if your baby lies there and sleeps I, uh, and it's really obvious their mouth's way open and their tongue's right at the bottom, that's not what we want. Okay. So that's a really important symptom that you would want to um, go and have investigated and osteopathy is, can be very helpful. Now, I treat a lot of babies who have had their tongue tie cut, and then what happens sometimes is it reattaches. So there's some things that you can do for exercises with your baby, such as literally get in their face, you know, 30 times a day, as you probably already are, and stick your tongue out at them, okay? They will mimic you. You wanna make sure that tongue can move, so again, it can rest on the roof of the mouth. After a tongue tie, I really encourage you, again, to check if the tongue is lying on the roof of the mouth when they are asleep. It's a great indicator. Why is this so important? Again, as an adult, it becomes important for how we breathe and how we're breathing while we're sleeping. And again, it's really important because it helps with breastfeeding. So if your child has a tongue tie and you have had it cut and you're working away and it's helping and you're, maybe your breastfeeding getting, is getting easier, I just wanna let you know, there's no judgment, but I just wanna let you know, you cut the tongue tie so the tongue can now go to the roof of the mouth, okay? So if it's constantly bottle fed and constantly has a soother in there, no judgment, it doesn't matter what you do, just know that you're more training the tongue to be down. So you would just want to be really diligent with those exercises, sticking the tongue out. Now why is this roof of the mouth so important? Number one is how we're designed. Number two is really soothing. So the person who taught all this information um, at a course I was in, Dr. Allison Siegel is amazing. She's a pediatric dentist who then became an expert through courses in the airway. Now, what she says is, what, what I learned from her, is that when the tongue doesn't rest on the roof of the mouth, it's very soothing, so what goes in? The thumb, okay? Now, also important, who cares if you're, you know, that's not the end of the world, of course, if someone sucks their thumb. However, what we're trying to accomplish is, with the thumb, is we're trying to have that soothing feeling. And what the tongue does up there is it actually creates a more horizontal palate. The roof of your mouth will grow more horizontal 
then vertical. If your tongue rests on the roof of the mouth, you can imagine, you know, it might impact how your teeth are growing later and all those things. So again, it's just encouraging and treating so we can encourage the way our bodies are supposed to grow. So I hope this information is helpful. I find a lot of my tongue tie moms and babies come in and, and they, they don't understand sort of the background to why and how it can help them or how maybe it is helping them or not helping them. And I hope you find this video very helpful. Thank you so much for watching and in, enjoy. Bye-bye.